Hello everyone, today we are going to see a couple of best practices that we should be following while writing a stored procedure for your application. So let's start. Avoid select start statement. Restrict yourself only to the number of columns which are actually required. For example, instead of select star from table 1, it would be beneficial to you select name age that is a column name from table 1. Second point which we should keep in mind is to avoid choice. We should be avoiding unnecessarily TV table choice. Try to use joins only when required. Count or exist. Do not use count aggregate in a subquery to do, to, to do an existence check. For example, instead of following query, select column from table 1 where 0 is less than subquery, select count star from table 2. Try to use this query, select column from table 1 where exist and then your subquery. The reason behind is, when you use count star, SQL Server doesn't know that you are doing an existence check. It will keep on counting even if it matches the rows or not. When you are doing an exist check, SQL Server knows that you are doing an existence check. Whenever it will find a first match, it will return true and true. Joins and column types. Try avoiding joining between different types of column if not required. When joining two different data types, SQL Server converts one of the column into another column type. Temporary tables. Avoid temporary tables as it resides in a temp DB database and communication gets slow. Default parameter. Use default parameter as much as possible. It helps to do a better and easy testing of stored procedure. Programming logic. Ideal scenario is to use stored procedure only for fetching and its inserting data. Avoid writing programming logic into stored procedure. Programming logic should be written at application level, not at a database level. Set no count. You set no count on at the beginning of your stored procedure as it suppresses messages like one rows affected, two rows affected, or n number of rows affected. This is going to help to increase the performance of stored procedure. Subqueries. You should try to minimize the number of subqueries as much as possible to write a healthy stored procedure. Avoid having clause. Avoid use of having clause if possible because it gets fired only after selecting all rows and then it's going to put filter on whole selection which is an overhead. Union or union all clause. Try to use union all in case of union clause. Union will perform an extra operation of removing duplicate rows, so avoid union if it is not required. Storing large objects. To store a large binary object, first place them in a file system and add part in a database column. Top keyword. Try to use top clause as much as possible. This is going to increase the performance of SP. Do not prefix SP underscore. Do not prefix SP underscore in stored procedure name. If a stored procedure name begin with SP underscore, then SQL Server searches it into master database first and then into current database. This is going to slow down your stored procedure. Avoid triggers. Try to avoid triggers as much as possible. 
if required use constraints instead well thank you everyone for watching this video hope if you'll follow these couple of good practices or steps i'm sure your stored procedure is going to be optimized to a large extent so all the best for your interviews and keep watching